You know, I get a lot of questions about privacy when it comes to cryptocurrency. And so I want to give you guys some options, a little bit of education, my friends, when it comes to staying private with crypto. I think it's kind of important to make sure that we know how to stay secure and private in this new world of cryptocurrency. <laughs> While blockchains offer a censorship-resistant way to transfer wealth, they were never really meant to preserve privacy. However, in the years since Bitcoin's inception, blockchains such as Monero, Zcash, and Secret Network have developed infrastructure for private blockchain transactions. At the same time, coin mixing protocols like CoinJoin and Tornado Cash give users the ability to disassociate the crypto they own from their real-life identity. And this is kind of the point. You want to stay as anonymous and as private as you possibly can on the interwebs. Now, when it comes to staying private on chain, the cryptocurrency movement has created a more open alternative to the traditional finance system. While blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum offer benefits such as financial inclusivity and transparency, they are not so good at preserving their users' privacy. In response to the need for helping users stay private, several blockchain solutions have emerged, and that is where I want to give you guys some options. Some of you guys, especially you green beans, might not have ever heard of these types of cryptocurrencies before. So it's worth checking it out. The first has to be, uh, this is my, my boy Alex, his favorite coin, Monero. Arguably the most successful privacy focused blockchain that still sees development and use today is Monero. Originally known as BitMonero, the network has deployed, was deployed in 2014 and has survived due to its best-in-class anonymity, range of privacy-preserving features, and active developer community that still includes many early contributors. Monero serves or, or makes the identity of senders, recipients, and the amount sent in transactions anonymous by disguising the addresses used by the participants. The network hides transaction details through a combination of privacy-preserving methods, including ring signatures, zero-knowledge proofs, stealth addresses, and IP address obscuring methods. Yes, lots of good juju in there, guys. Lots of different options. That's the point. We need options, my friends. That's the whole idea. The more options we have, the better. I'm liking this, guys. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Monero has implemented several updates to improve its security and privacy features in the eight years since its launch. In December of 2019, the network switched to its proof-of-work algorithm from Crypto Knight to Random X to stop application-specific integrated circuit or ASIC machines from mining Monero. I remember this, and I thought that was a terrible idea because, let's be honest, the more that we can mine with ASICs, the better. I'm kind of into that. I'm kind of into that uh, mining. Some of you guys know. The move improved the network security by making it more difficult and expensive to 51% attack the network. That's right. In May 2020, Monero implemented ZK Snarks into its privacy technology. This improved transactions by making them faster, more efficient, and requiring fewer confirmations. Monero also preserves privacy by having completely fungible coins. Unlike that busy beat where individual coins can potentially be traced back to every wallet that held them, and when they were min mined, all of Monero's XMR coins are completely indistinguishable from one another. However, as Monero is currently viewed as the gold standard for both crypto privacy and anonymity, it has become the blockchain of choice for cyber criminals. Now, this is something that, frankly, most of you guys need not care about. This is just the article giving us the usual. So yes, there's ransomware, there's marketplace hackers, and all the all these types of things, like North Korean hackers, have reported to use Monero in their illicit activities. As such, the Internal Revenue Service has posted bounties of up to $625,000 for contractors that can develop Monero tracing technologies. We we're trying to get on the other side of that. That's right. I remember that. Currently, no bounties have been claimed, which speaks to the Monero's privacy technology. Actually, I didn't know that. I didn't know none of those bounties were claimed. That's a good thing. It means ain't nobody figuring it out, guys. So the next privacy coin that we got to talk about is Zcash. While Monero is the most popular privacy-preserving blockchain in use, it is not the only one. Another popular blockchain of choice among privacy enthusiasts is Zcash. Launched in 2016, Zcash uses zero-knowledge proofs to verify transactions without revealing the sender, receiver, or transaction amount. 
Zero Knowledge Proof use, uses crypto, uh, advanced crypto currency cryptography <laughs> and lets parties, lets parties to confirm the details of a transaction without revealing any of the specifics to one another. ZK Proofs achieve this through a special set of verifying keys that are shared among all the participants in the network. These keys let network participants cryptographically confirm changes on the Zcash ledger without revealing which addresses were involved or how many coins were actually transferred. Now, this is actually a, a big part of the major difference between Monero and Zcash right here. So there is this one major difference between Monero, which we just talked about, and Zcash. While all of Monero transactions must use the network's privacy features, Zcash privacy features are optional and do not come as a default. While this system makes it easier to broadcast transactions publicly if needed, it also has the unintended effect of compromising the privacy of those trying to hide their transactions. Currently, less than 20% of all Zcash transactions use the network's full privacy-preserving features. When only a small portion of total users are shielding their transactions, it makes it much easier for an attacker to isolate the few users who are using the privacy features, potentially weakening the privacy of their transactions. On the other hand, because all Monero transactions must use the network's rigorous privacy system, no transaction stands out from the others. This maximum privacy is maintained for all users. So this is something that I'm a big fan of. And this is whenever anyone asks me, this is why we're talking about it right here, right? Whenever anyone asks me, hey, what it, when it comes to privacy coins and making sure that I have complete anonymity, Monero really is right now the best place to go. Despite the vulnerability, the technology behind Zcash is just as secure, if not more secure than Monero. Theoretically, the technology securing Zcash transactions is impossible to crack without the network creation event keys. However, if these keys were not destroyed and still exist somewhere, they could be used to attack the network by minting unlimited amounts of new coins or falsifying transactions. Now, there's a guy who kind of knows a little bit about this. His name is Vitalik Buterin. And he said that he's, you know, he's praised Zcash's zero knowledge cryptography, noting that the network is engaged in cutting edge research and development of privacy tech. He also sits on the scientific advisory boards of the Electric Coin Company, the firm that developed Zcash. So there's a little bit of a bias there, but you know what? Maybe Vital if you're a Vitalik uh, Buterin uh, fan, then maybe Zcash is the right philosophical token for you to use. Now, here's a relatively newer one. Maybe some of you guys haven't heard about this before, but uh, I've actually never used this before. So this is this is new to me too. I mean, I've heard about it, but uh, hey, I ain't gonna lie, I've never used it. <laughs> it's called the Secret Network. The Secret Network is an emergency privacy, emerging privacy-focused blockchain that's starting to gain traction. Unlike Monero and Zcash, Secret Network is Turing complete. That means it can handle smart contracts like those found on blockchains like Ethereum and Solana. The network is pioneering what it calls secret finance, comprised of DeFi applications enabled by privately encrypted smart contracts. These secret contracts preserve privacy by encrypting the input, state, and output of all transactions. However, compared to Monero and Zcash, other transaction details such as block height, time, chain ID, sender, address, sent funds, and contract hash are not encrypted. Secret Network, therefore, is less interested in maintaining anonymity than other privacy-oriented networks, but it still ensures that the interactions between users and smart contracts remain relatively private. Private smart contracts offer, offer several advantages over public ones. Unlike Ethereum and other Layer 1 networks, transactions on Secret Network are resistant to front-running since they are never visible in the meme pool. <laughs> Did I just say meme pool? The mempool. The meme pool. Memes. Okay, that's the, that's it. Right there. Memes. This means that the opportunist can not, cannot extract value through MEV, a popular practice in which users pay to rearrange transactions and blocks. Additionally, because secret networks' smart contracts operate as encrypted black boxes, they can handle sensitive data without the risk of broadcasting it publicly. This guarantee allows private blockchain networks to run their operations on secret network, opening up interoperability with other applications built on the network as well. And so secret networks' privacy features extend beyond its own applications and token. Through the network's, quote, secret bridges, users can bridge tokens from other networks such as Ethereum or BNB chain, Binance chain, and take advantage of all secret networks' privacy-preserving features. Hmm. 
That's actually pretty cool. Interoperability, guys, is a big deal. And I've talked about this. You guys know. It's going to be a huge thing as we move into the 2022, 23, 24s, my friends. Interoperability, big deal. When assets are bridged, they become encrypted and are only visible to their owners or those holding a, a viewing key. Bridge tokens can then be used to uh, cross the network and all of the secret network, network ecosystem. Despite all of its promises compared to the more time-tested Monero and Zcash, the technology behind Secret Network is relatively unproven. That network minted its Genesis block in February of 2020 and has only started onboarding a large number of users over the past few months. According to data from DeFi Llama, Secret Network currently hosts only 40 million of total value locked across all its DeFi protocols, highlighting how underdeveloped its ecosystem is compared to layer, competing layer one blockchains. Despite its current low usage, the network's native SCRT token has reached a market cap of $766.7 million. Not too bad. Not too bad. So many of you guys might ask, you might say, hey, well, okay, so we've talked about some private tokens, right? Monero, Zcash, Secret Network. What about this thing that I've heard about it's called like a mixer or something. No, no, no. It's not the social that you wanted, wanted to go to, but you didn't go to, and you should have gone to. Actually, to be quite frank, most mixers suck. Uh, I'll just be honest. With you. Maybe it's just because I'm antisocial. I don't know. But let's talk about these coin mixers. While dedicated privacy-preserving blockchains offer effective ways to stay private, those holding funds on other public blockchains such as Bitcoin and Ethereum may also want to take measures to maintain privacy. Network activity cannot be hidden by nature of, uh, and this is kind of kind of how most of the blockchain networks work anyway. You can't really see, you can always see what's going on. However, Coin mixing services can be used to break the trail of transactions between addresses, letting users keep their crypto wallets separate from their real life identities. While there are several reasons why someone would want to use coin mixing services, uh, I've used them now and again. Coin mixing services, I think what makes coin mixing services great is the, the feeling you get of knowing that you've just mixed your coins, mixed your tokens, and that essentially the trail has ended now you might say well only someone who wants to cover their trail no not really i actually went through a phase um and i talked about this with my community i think it was back in 2017 18 in which i pretty much mixed all my tokens all the time it, it just became part of my discipline uh when it comes to moving moving money but i've changed you change it's kind of become a little bit of a burden but anyway, people often use these mixers for operational security purposes, which is pretty much what I was doing most of the time anyway. People who have a large amount of crypto wealth tied to real-life identities have increasingly been targeted by hackers, social engineering scams, and even kidnapping. Wallets within vast amounts of coins are fully visible on-chain and can be traced back to the hodler's real-life identity with relatively little effort. Coin mixing services such as CoinJoins and Tornado Cash can help users break the connection between high-value crypto wallets and their real-life identities, helping to protect them from being targeted. So let's go right into these two options. The first one is CoinJoin. So CoinJoin uses a transaction privacy method where several users collaborate to obscure the sources and destinations of that busy beat sent between them. Users sign a digital smart contract to mix their coins in a new Bitcoin transaction, where the output leaves participants with the same number of coins but mixes the addresses to make external tracking difficult. The process anonymizes Bitcoin tra transactions without the need for a centralized operator. Greg Maxwell first proposed the process of using CoinJoin in 2013, and it has since become one of the most popular ways to preserve privacy among Bitcoin hodlers. Initially, the biggest obstacle to using CoinJoin was finding enough hodlers who also wished to mix their coins. Now, Bitcoin wallets like Wasabi... Wasabi. Wasabi. You guys remember that? <laughs> Wasabi. And Samurai have directly implemented CoinJoin, offering users an easy way to connect, mix coins, and preserve that privacy. While coin mixing effectively preserves the privacy of Bitcoin hodlings, there's increasing evidence that mixing through CoinJoin may not be as secure as previously thought. In February, Forbes journalist Laura Shin claimed that blockchain data platform Chainalysis was able to demix Bitcoins sent through CoinJoin to identify the 2016 Ethereum DAO hacker. Is that right? Was that right? Did that? Did it really happen like that? I forget, guys. I forget. Did, did, is that really? 
Is that the history? Amazing. While demix and coin join is theoretically possible, it's unclear whether chain analysis found ways to trace mixed bitcoins or whether the hacker made mistakes that led to his identity being revealed. So let's talk about this next one. It's called Tornado Cash. I've actually never used this one. So who knows? Those looking to stay private on Ethereum may use a, may, you know, the reason why I don't use a lot of these applications is because a lot of these applications are for Ethereum, which I don't care about and I don't really, really use. So that's why. Those looking to stay private on Ethereum can use a dedicated coin mixing platform called Tornado Cash. It works on the same principle as CoinJoin, except users do not need to find other parties to mix their coins with. Instead, the mixing process is handled through advanced smart contracts made possible on that Ethereum. Tornado Cash is often touted as being more secure than mixing Bitcoin through CoinJoin, and the process connects input and output accounts through zero-knowledge proofs rather than merely obfuscating transaction data. This means that it's theoretically impossible to connect the address that deposited the Ethereum into the Tornado Cash and that the wallet that eventually receives it, as long as the user doesn't inadvertently compromise their own privacy. No one can see it. Okay. So to use Tornado Cash, users generate a random key and deposit Ethereum or ERC-20 tokens, then submit a hash of their key to the Tornado Cash smart contract. After depositing, it's advised to wait some amount of time before withdrawing funds to a new wallet. The longer the period between the deposit and withdrawal is, the more secure the transfer will be. To withdraw funds, users must submit a zero-knowledge proof of their key to Tornado Cash, and the smart contract will withdraw the deposited funds to the specified recipient. Well, lots of systems out there. We got Monero, we got Zcash, we got Secret Network, we got we got CoinJoin, and we have Tornado Cash. Multiple ways to keep yourself private and relatively private. A little bit of options, but at the end of the day, I know what my main man Alex would say. He'd say, well, why don't you just use Monero? But here's my closing thoughts. For many people who hold crypto, staying private is incredibly important. Privacy preserving blockchains like and protocols like Zcash and Tornado Cash help users stay private, improve security for high net worth individuals, and allow those living under totalitarian regimes to preserve their assets. However, it's also important to acknowledge the costs of privacy. Blockchains like Monero have helped cyber criminals execute ransomware attacks and hide millions of dollars. Tornado Cash also lets hackers launder ill-gotten tokens from DeFi protocol exploits and phishing attacks. As crypto continues to enter the mainstream, governments will likely look to crack down on privacy-preserving technologies in the name of reducing crypto-related crime. While this is an admirable goal, striking a balance between privacy and crime reduction will be the key to allowing crypto technologies to reach their true potential. And frankly, at the end of the day, everything technology built with technology is going to be used for good and bad. And so, at the end of the day... It's all about just you, you doing you, protecting you. Thanks, guys, for joining us in this crypto news bit about privacy tokens. I enjoy being here. I changed up my uh, my video thing a little bit. Only those who actually hang out to the very end of these videos gets to hear some of my, my non-contextual rants of sorts. But uh, guys, have a great one, my friends. Have a real good day. You know, every day we're grinding. And the thing is, is I love these these news bits because it helps me learn and helps me grow and i love talking about it if there's some some comments that i can provide but man i tell you yeah good day let's go